everybody got something to say about me crying about my homies. Like, sometimes in life, bro, y'all got to let that shit out. Everybody want to be tough, play tough, do all this extra tough gangster shit. Nigga, that's what's wrong with the world now. You niggas cry behind closed doors. Like, I was putting a message out to let the world know it's cool to let it out. Stop bottling up shit, man. All right, so what I want to speak on is the fact that this guy, King Yellow, he's from Chicago. And um, he's lost probably over 100 homies to gang bang, to, I mean, to gang violence. And um, he's 32 years old. He just came home from the federal penitentiary system. And he's on, a, on the right track in life. You know, he's a great guy. And he's making positive changes. And he posted a video of him crying um, because he had just found out one of his friends from his old neighborhood was murdered. And time and time again, guys like this from Chicago and just inner city guys who come from violent neighborhoods constantly experience death. And you know what the reaction was to him crying? People made fun of him. And this is not really a surprise. I spent a lot of time in the inner city school systems. I deal with the youth. My father has been a school teacher in the inner city school system for 40 years. And one thing that I've noticed about the young black youth is that they don't have any conflict resolution skills because the culture that we superimpose on, on into our onto our black youth is the hip hop culture, street culture. And first of all, it's forty four million black people in America. We created so many different expressions of culture. We created jazz, we created rock, we've got some of the brightest and most intelligent people of our race. But for some reason the young black youth, especially young boys, grow up with street culture uh, uh, pushed on them. There's actually a heavy amount of pressure on young boys who go to inner city schools to be into the street culture. And, you know, we can get into that, but that's a long conversation. I personally think it's because socioeconomic factors, hip hop has been invented by the government to suppress the, the achievements of the civil rights movement. And, you know, these guys don't have any uh, role models in their neighborhood because the successful black people always move away and try to integrate into the white society. So basically, it just sheds light on the problem. Young black males don't ha have conflict resolution skills because growing up in the inner city school system, elementary, middle, high school, which is the training ground, listening to hip hop songs that embrace violence, encourage violence, they psychologically are conditioned to think that you're soft if you talk a problem out. You're soft if you express any kind of emotion other than brute force and alpha male energy. And if you've been trained to handle your social conflicts like this from the time you were a child through conditioning from hip-hop music that's very violent, combine that with the factors from your neighborhood and your school, you're gonna get, you're gonna grow up into an emotionally unintelligent, emotionally stunted person. And you're going to think that there's no other way to solve conflicts other than violence. You can combine that with another thing. A lot of these young black males who grew up in the inner city, who grew up in the streets, who are corrupted by street culture, they're never rewarded or recognized for anything but violence. Their peers, the people who they look up to, are rewarded for violence. You know, they, nobody really takes the time to tell them, hey, you're smart at this, you're talented at this, you're skilled at this. The only time that they get that kind of, you know, uh, that, that kind of, uh, uh, you know, confidence boost or compliment or anything that psychologically makes them want to, you know, uh, 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 do something great. You know, the only time they really get that kind of motivation is if, Somebody recognizes them for violence. Oh, you beat that guy up, you're tough. Oh, you got a gun, you're cool. Oh, you just bought the latest European brand, uh, fashion brand, name brand, you're cool. You know, so we were con these young kids are growing, growing up in a psychological atmosphere where they're constantly getting rewarded for violence, bad behavior, ignorance, un you know, and just bad things in general. You know, so you know, it's, 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 it's no wonder that people are making fun of him and the people who are making fun of him are guys who think that the street culture is cool guys who actually celebrate black genocide guys who actually you know would, wouldn't have it any other way if black people weren't committing genocide on it onto each other into the streets these guys probably wouldn't even want to be black you know these guys love genocide 
They love it when black people kill other black people. They love the whole concept of gang banging and people getting killed over the most trivial issues. You know, they don't want the black race to do better. They don't want young black boys to grow up and be able to achieve things, become educated and live their best life. They want these young boys to follow into their footsteps and die before they're 18, drop out of school at 15, and don't do anything to add to their skill set. They don't, you know, they don't want these young black boys to grow up and be marketable to the economy. They want these young boys to grow up with no skills, so when they finish with the street life, if they don't make it to prison or they don't die, they're not going to have any skills to offer to any employment. So they're going to have to join the food sector like fast food or something like that. Or they're going to have to you know, start from scratch when they hit 30 or 40 when they finally mature. And they're going to have to do all the things that they should have done when they were 18. So at the end of the day, I support King Yellow. I think it's important that he's showing this side to himself because it's not cool to lose friends to gun violence. You know, he's 32 years old. He's literally lost over 100 friends to the streets to gun violence. And for him to cry and express the sadness and disappointment that he has to constantly relive this same situation over and over again with his friends dying. And for people to come out and make fun of him and call him soft. It's just, it epitomizes the fact that we've got a cancer in our community. And that's created by hip-hop. And it's created by this genocidal lifestyle that we call the street culture. You put a young boy into an inner city school, and if he's smart, he likes school, he wants to stay out of trouble, he's going to get made fun of and become a target. The only way that he can actually get some type of recognition is if he commits acts of violence. You know? Becomes uneducated, becomes ignorant. That's the only way that young boy is going to become recognized. So it's no wonder that we're creating young black men who laugh at other black men for crying because they lost their friend to gun violence because they've been conditioned to be that way and as long as we allow this conditioning to happen we're going to continuously manufacture thugs like factories like an assembly line we're going to take the brain out and we're going to insert that with a hip-hop song and that's going to be their brain their brain's going to be like a hip-hop song you know, you take the brain out on the assembly line, replace it with a hip-hop song, and then go on to the next young black boy. Take their brain out, put the hip-hop song in their brain, go to the next. And it's like we're manufacturing this. And then when they get out in the world, when you turn them on and program them, they die. They refuse to be educated. So yeah, man, it's just sad that this situation happened. But I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep counseling these young kids. I'm going to keep trying to motivate them. And thank God that young, that, that King Yella has joined the good side and he's trying to do the same thing as me motivate these kids to realize that they've been corrupted by the street culture they've been conditioned by the devil